Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. As always, I'm Billy. I got my man Dame here with me. How are we doing today, Dame? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing real, real good. I got to got to watch a good basketball game yesterday, man. And kind of sad though. This the season's over. I'm a little bit sad about that, but I'm, I'm doing good otherwise. Yeah, we have officially hit the end of the 2022-2023 NBA season. Um, I know the, the thread's been going around on Twitter saying it was one of the funniest seasons ever. <laughs> um, I think when we really get a chance to sit and look back on it, this was one of the <clears> most <throat> eventful NBA seasons in a long time. Just like some of the stuff off, my, off the top of my head. We had two different people drop 70 points this year. <laughs> that's that crazy. feels like it feels like years ago like all right. the season all the drama Kyrie got traded KD got traded um so much going on so I can't wait till till we get a chance to really sit back and reflect on this past year but before we get too far ahead of ourselves obviously gonna get the housekeeping out of the way first um if you're watching on YouTube be sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel um, if you are on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, go ahead and leave a five-star review. Um, and set it to auto-download to your device. Um, it's much appreciated. Y'all been going crazy, as we said before, on the shorts. We're up to over 200,000 views on the Instagram alone. Y'all been going crazy on the TikTok, the YouTube. Uh, so we appreciate all the love and the support. Um, without further ado, we're going to get right into it. The Denver Nuggets are NBA champions for the first time in the organization's history. <clears throat> 47th season in the NBA. This is their first championship, and it is well-deserved. Well-deserved for this group. Um, this run that we just saw, and I'll get into it later with some of the narratives that people are already trying to spin up about it, they were dominant. They were just clearly head and shoulders above everybody that they played against. And for all the people that think that they played against low seeds, easy competition, I don't think it would have mattered. It would not have mattered who they played against. Facts. They were playing the best basketball in the league right now. And it showed <clears throat> on the, the biggest stage last night in a game to clinch the NBA finals, which, you know, anybody that's been there and done that will tell you, this is the hardest game to win. Right. Cause the other team now, it's like there's nothing left to lose, right? You're given mm -hmm. 110%, 120%, right? There's no reason to reserve anything in the tank. Um, and that showed in this game with – I didn't know if I was watching the NBA Finals or WrestleMania the way at that. <laughs> <laughs> People were flying all over the court. Bodies were getting laid out left and right. No fouls here. Then it's a ticky-tack call over here. I mean, it was mayhem, but throughout it all – Denver was able to weather the, the early storm of some of the foul trouble they got in. And as sloppy and messy of a game that this was, where some of the best players are shooting crazy inefficient stat lines. Jimmy went five for 18. Bam went nine for 20. Gabe Vincent, three for 13. Max Struess, five for 12. Even on the Nuggets, Jamal Murray, six for 15. Michael Porter Jr., seven for 17. Aaron Gordon, one for six. Nikola Jokic went 12 for 16 from the field with 28 points, 16 rebounds, and four assists. I was, I was, uh, I forgot who said it, but I think I was probably watching like a TikTok or something. But the dude was like, in this type of game where it's such a slugfest, that 28 points felt like 40. Just compared to how everyone else was scoring, that 28 points in this specific game felt like a 40 point game. Like, it was ridiculous to do that efficiently along with that. But the dude is just insane, bro. This dude is just insane. He is <clears throat> easily right now to me the, the best basketball player on the planet. <clears throat> this yeah. run that he's he just went on, A, needs to put a complete stop to some of the dumb narratives that people have been spinning out for the last couple of years. After last season, there was a lot of talk um, among the media about if Jokic can be the best player on a championship team, can you win with Jokic as your best player? After he loses to the Warriors, who obviously go on to win the championship mm -hmm. with no Jamal Murray, um, and I don't think Michael Porter Jr. was playing no, Michael, the series. Sorry, exactly. it's just him and Aaron Gordon 
first of world with composite. Composite, right? yeah. <laughs> right. So in the first season where you have that core finally together, you've got Jokic healthy. Um, Jamal Murray's back from the ACL tear. Michael Porter Jr. is healthy. Aaron Gordon is there. They go on into the postseason and come out as champions on a 16 to 4 run. Only lost four games the entirety of the postseason. Um, and two of those were absolute, some of the best scoring outputs we've ever seen in playoff history by Devin Booker. And that's mm-hmm. just what it takes to barely beat them. Right. <laughs> those games in, in the second round. So, and, and only one home loss the entire, entire postseason. Um, so this run that they went on, and we'll kind of get into more of the, the context of it, but just pure dominance from, from start to finish. They clearly started with the end in mind um, and were able to, to cross that finish line last night. But I want to get a little bit into the recap specifically of this game because, like I said, it was sloppy. It was scrappy. Um, I think they, they played a clip of Mike Malone in the beginning um, where, where he told his team, you know, this isn't going to be a game that's given to you, right? You're going to have to go out and take it. You have to win this game. You're not going to mm-hmm. win a championship. That, Miami isn't going to roll over. They're not just going to lose the game. You're going to have to beat them for it. And I think that was evident from the tip. It was very, very physical. Um, the, the refs, at least in the beginning, were seeming to let them play a lot. A lot of contact was was allowed. Things that I thought were clear fouls were not getting called in the beginning of the game. Um, and that definitely seemed to rattle the Nuggets. They had four turnovers in the first three minutes of the game, um, which kind of had Miami going a little bit. Um, but Denver was able to calm it down, had some timeouts. I know they had the big dunk there by Jeff Green and Jamal Murray there. Um, and I felt like that set the tone, and Miami immediately responded. Bam out of bio, who I want to make sure I give him his flowers to me was the best player on the heat this entire finals um, for them. And I I know I said going in multiple times, right. You're going to, he has the tallest task of anybody on this team to be guarding the best player in the world who I I still don't know what you do, right. I don't know what you do with him, but I think he, he did even in efforts where, you know, he's getting scored on, He's trying to do so much on the defensive side of the ball, trying to fight under the screen. He's trying to show, trying to get back into the drop. <clears throat> They're putting him on the islands where he's playing one-on-one. Um, he's switching. He's rotating. He's helping. He's doing so much on the defensive side of the ball and consistently had great, great for him, offensive performances in the series. So I want to make sure I give Bam my, the, his flowers there. I thought he had a, a great series. Um, especially on the glass too as well can't can't under under estimate understate that um for him so I want to make sure that he got his flowers but yeah so they going back and forth there in, in the first quarter um they were Jokic got into some early foul trouble Aaron Gordon got into some early foul trouble um and Bam took advantage of that early um and got the heat rolling um who took a lead into into halftime there um and seemingly had some type of breathing room a little bit going into the the second half, but um, moving into, into the second half, um, the shots finally started to fall for the Nuggets. I think they were one for 15 from three at halftime and were struggling from the free throw line too. And they were good looks, open looks, shots that they could make. Mm -hmm. Um, They just weren't falling. And we both have said it so many times this playoffs, but Jokic always seems to know when to turn it on. And it felt like getting down into the, into the fourth quarter, tight game, one score game. Here come the Jokic post ups. He's driving. He's getting the switches onto to Caleb Martin or onto a guard, and he's taking him into the post and he's getting to the basket. Um, he just has such a great feel for the game and, and what's needed from him in that moment. And those buckets down the the stretch were were huge. And then a couple of free throws were able to seal this game for for Denver, and they're able to go out as champions on their home court, which is, which is huge. Always great to see a team win at home and see the crowd um, react and nobody leaves the arena because you get to see mm-hmm. the, the trophy ceremony. But yeah, what'd you think about this game um, and, and really this series as a whole for, for both of these teams? So this, 
I mean, it didn't really show me what I, I it didn't show me anything new about the Nuggets. It just confirmed what we already were talking about um, as far as the Nuggets being able to win games any way, like any, any way possible. Like if you want to play them in a shootout, they can beat you in a shootout. You want to play a slugfest, a physical slugfest like it was yesterday, they can do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. They don't hit threes. They shot 18% from three. They can still win the game. They can get hot and shoot 45% from three, and they'll win the game. No one else on the team could be have it going, and then they could just give the ball to the best player in the world in the post and have him work and score, or they can set him up to be a facilitator. If he's uh, if he doesn't have it going, which it seems like it's never happened at this point, you still have Jamal Murray who can get high at any point. You know what I mean? So it's just like – and they have role players who step up. So it just confirmed the fact that but they can beat you any way possible. Honestly, this is one of the most complete teams I've ever watched, not even just this season. Like just in general of my life watching basketball, this might be one of the most complete, like flawless teams I've ever watched. Like they can beat you in so many different ways. And it's just it, – it's honestly – it's really crazy to see. Um, as far as the Heat, I really just feel like – they they just weren't they just ran into a better team like mm-hmm. I just think they like they had some things that they could have done better I think Jimmy has to be a lot better like the one through the first two three quarters he was just kind of a no show he was missing yeah. easy mid range shots easy floaters easy shots that he normally would make so he he himself has to be better but honestly I just feel like unless Jimmy Butler had a Bucks forty fifty point game like takeover type game that they they just weren't gonna win and they never really had a chance in this series because. Like I said, the Nuggets are just too good. They can beat you in so many different ways, and then when in doubt, just give the ball to Jokic and let him work. So I just think they ran into a better team. Um, like I said, Jimmy has to play better. You can only rely on your role players to take you so far, and we've seen that at this point. Like Caleb Martin, uh, Gabe Vincent, Duncan Robin, those guys weren't going to win you the finals. Like You needed your best players to be playing at that caliber that they normally would be playing at, and that didn't really happen for Jimmy Butler, but like I say, man, they just they ran into a better team, bro. The Nuggets are just they're just too good. If I'm being honest. Yeah, at, looking at it from the Heat, I want to spend some time on them before we really dive into what this championship means for the Nuggets and Jokic's resume and building legacy at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, looking at the Heat, like you said, they ran into the best team in basketball, right? I mm-hmm. it's hard to say they have nothing to hang their hat on when you know, you make it to the finals and lose. Like, that's now for the second time in the last, you know, was it three years, four years? Four years, um, yeah. That's going to be a hard pill for them to swallow, um, especially for guys like, you know, Jimmy Butler and Bam and, who you know, have been there for both, Duncan Robinson as well. Um, that's going to be tough for them to, to deal with, having, to, you know, knowing the grind to just get to the finals and to come up short both times is it's tough, but – especially this season, this was a magical run that they went on. And I think it's going to, I hope it does shift the way that teams think about that last two, three months of the season. They were a playing team that -hmm. just made, like we hadn't had a playing team make the, then won a series before this playoffs. Right. And two of them make the conference finals. And, and the Heat and the Lakers and the Heat obviously advancing to the NBA finals. Um, so that should put, you know, these teams on notice that, look, you don't have to pack it in and, and try to get a lottery spot because anything can happen. Anything right. can happen when you get into the postseason. So, you know, if you're the nine seed, the 10 seed, the 11 seed, and, you know, you have the opportunity to say, well, hey, you know, we can go and just, you know, pack it in this last month just go and get a lottery pick and, and move on to next year. Who knows? You could go, you could become the next Miami heat, right? You could mm-hmm. go on a run like that. And so um, that I think will hopefully spark some changing of mindsets moving forward for some of these, these teams in front offices and coaching staffs for how they approach the, the end of season around that, that ranking moving forward. But um, going back to the, the heat as, as a team this year in this run, um, I would say looking back on it, that first round series against Milwaukee, that is like going to be a legacy series for Jimmy Butler. What he was able to do, obviously the biggest one being that it was a 56 point game, mm-hmm. um, 
and just the way he's able to close out that series in game five down the stretch in overtime, um, that is always going to be something that's remembered for him. Every other series after that, that these were complete team efforts. Yeah. It wasn't exactly. just that, like the Bucks were probably that series is more of a Jimmy show. After this, the Miami Heat were just playing great basketball. They got hot from three. Um, their role players were stepping up. Their defense was at unreal levels. They had the Boston Celtics down 3-0 in a series where ESPN had them, what, the Heat had like a 3% chance to win that series, right? That, that was always ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they, they proved the doubters wrong every single series up until this one. Include, me and you included, right? We picked against the Heat every single series. Yeah. We thought the Bucks would be easy. We knew it would be physical because the Heat are not a, a cakewalk team, but we knew it was going to be a physical series, but the Bucks would easily be able to handle them. They beat them in five. Say, so, okay, well, you know, the Knicks are playing really well. I think the, the Knicks can probably, you know, they're playing good. They're coming off. I thought that the Cavs would give them a fight, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. They handle the Knicks. It's like, well, shoot, okay. Here goes Boston going back. Surely to the they can't be back Boston. Back years, right? Right. <laughs> and they had them down 3 0. It, look, it got dicey at the end, but game seven was definitive. You know, injuries aside, at the end of the day, the game was played. And they were clearly the better team that night um, and, and deserved to win that series because if you're Boston, you can't go down 0-3, right? No one's done it for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, and so even just to get to the finals after all of that is a, an achievement in and of itself. So, you know, this team, Jimmy, Bam, Gabe Vincent, Max Struess, Duncan Robinson, obviously Caleb Martin, Kyle Lowry, who had a, a great game last night just impacted the game so many different ways. Um, ended up with nine rebounds. So many of them, he's just like diving in, putting his body on the line against the bigs um, and is able to make something happen. He's diving over the floor. He's looking to take charges. It felt like a, this is the Kyle Lowry that has always been able to impact the game. And I think he found something coming off of the bench in this postseason that I hope he can take with him um, mm -hmm. if he looks to stay with this Heat team moving forward. Um but, but, yeah, Haywood Highsmith, too, you know, Cody Zeller, everybody on this team, Kevin Love, too, like everyone stepped up and had a huge impact for the Heat. So I want to make sure that they get their flowers because this, this was a fantastic run. Um, it's always fun to root for an underdog, um, and, and they were able to get the job done three out of the four series uh, um, in this postseason. So, so credit to them. Yeah. 100%. Um, yeah, like I said, it's just unfortunate that they ran into the best team in the league, but th this is definitely, it definitely was a magical run. Definitely was a magical run. I mean, <laughs> we felt like at some point it had to come to an end. This, this, I'm not going to say it was, a, it wasn't no fluky run or anything like that. Like, like you said, they were clearly the better team in all of the previous series that they played, but you just ran into, it seemed like a freaking juggernaut. Like you yeah. just ran into the best team in the league. So um, Miami Heat, Moving forward, I mean, I know there's rumors that we're probably going to get into later about them possibly getting like a Damian Lillard or just someone to come like bring them to that next level. Because like we said, you've been to the finals two out of the past four years. I think been to the Eastern Conference Finals. What what is this like the third, fourth time they've been in the Eastern Conference yeah. Finals in recent years? So it's like they just need I feel like they just need something else that can just get them over that hump. Like they can get there, but they just need one more piece that can just get them over that hump. So. Um, hopefully for them that they can find that piece and then they can finally get over that hump and win a championship in, in the near future. But it, it's been a great run. It's been a great season for the Miami Heat. Yeah, I think bringing in another person that can be honestly the number one scoring option for them, which slides Jimmy to being, you know, secondary option there. Obviously, then continues to impact the game on the defensive side of the ball. Like he always does. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have ideally two different closing options to finish out any game. We now see Bam able to shoulder such a big defensive workload and continue to have uh, really good contributions offensively. Um, and I think that then, you know, this is a different series if it's not so reliant on Jimmy having to be this big score every night because we know that he can do it, but that's not – who he is at his core. You know, that's not how he mm -hmm. plays basketball. Um, and so 
you know, we have a whole off season to get into, you know, what the Heat are, are able to do in some of these rumors. So yeah, um, it's, it's going to be interesting. They are they definitely have a, a lot of money tied up, but um, some moves to potentially be made for them. But um, want to pivot to the Nuggets now and really put this this all into context. Um, obviously, Jokic gets the the Finals MVP, well deserved. Puts him in um, a very rare conversation of players to have. Um, two or more MVPs, as well as a, a championship and a finals MVP. Um, he is putting together that case. I, I know J.J. Redick was on, I think it was Get Up this morning. He said he thinks he's already a top 30, maybe top 25 player of all time. I agree. And, right, and the resume stacks up, the eye test stacks up. Like, he's doing things that we've never seen before. He's the first player to ever – ever lead an entire postseason in points, rebounds, and assists. Man, this dude is ridiculous, bro. And he like, only, like, in addition to that, he only lost four games. And he lost one at home. And, mo- and most of the series that he played were quick, like five games, six games, four games, five games. Like, it's not like he's playing seven-game series. Like, he's ending these series quick. And it's like, I gen- he's not even really tr- – like, like I – He's one of those players I genuinely believe when they're like, it's just stats. Like, I genuinely believe he's like, bro, I really don't. I'm not trying to go out here and get a triple double. I'm not right. trying to get a 30 point, 30, 20, 10 game. Like, I just want to win the game. Right. And my team calls for me to do put up that stat line. So I'm going to do that. Like, bro, this dude is ridiculous, bro. Yeah. He's, he's unbelievable. And I think <clears throat> they also put up a stat last night. He's now the lowest drafted player i guess technically the highest drafted or you know what i mean, I see what the, you mean. Yeah, right, yeah 41st mm-hmm. overall pick so the latest draft pick to ever win finals mvp um, bro they were playing a taco bell commercial as he was getting drafted <laughs> like, bro, they were putting in uh i saw on tour last night they were showing what his face scan looked like in like 2k 15 or 16 whichever the first 2k he was in mm-hmm. and like he didn't get scanned into the game like he was one of those players where it was like uh, we don't they, he's not getting scanned in they just like do this like base player model and try to mold it to look like him bro right. look terrible look terrible and this dude is now <laughs> one of the best centers of all time like he's entering that conversation i'm not saying he's the greatest but it's like he has the resume he has the stats like he has the the um the accolades at this point to be have a seat at that table right and start being a part of those discussions um and even getting to the, the rest of the guys on this team, like what this means to a guy like Jamal Murray, like watching the emotion on his face after that final buzzer went off, like you could see the tears immediately because, you know, he said flat out, he thought the Nuggets were, were going to trade him after last year, right? Like he had gotten medically cleared to play, but um, I think mentally and physically, he just still wasn't ready to go, which is obviously understandable um, coming off of such a big knee injury like that. Um, he was concerned that they were going to, you know, trade him because they're in a win now mode and he's not playing, wasn't playing at that moment, but um, to see him come back and get his confidence back and then go on this finals run um, where he was just as important to this championship as Jokic was like, they don't get this championship without Jamal Murray as well. Like this duo between the two of them, this feels like from a, a championship perspective or consistent contending perspective, this feels like the, just the beginning for them, right? Like they're both just at the very early stages of their prime. So there is a, a large runway, a lot of time for them to have more opportunities to, you know, get more accolades, all stars, all NBAs, but additionally Western conference championships and, and competing for the finals year in and year out. Um, so that, that's, a, you know, a great story for him there. You see how much it meant for him, for his team to, and his organization really to continue to trust him. For a guy like Aaron Gordon, who was I think, a number four pick in Orlando, it just didn't work out. And him to come and get a new role, you know, similar to a guy like Wiggins, just, you know, new, new scenery, um, you know, reduced role, but he's able to do more because he has less responsibility. And he turns into, look at all the guys he defended this postseason. From, uh, you got, you know, Anthony Edwards, KD, Devin Booker, 
then going to LeBron and Anthony Davis, and now in this series having to guard Jimmy Butler as well. That is a gauntlet of guys to have to sit down and get in the chair against every single night in the postseason. Um, and he handled it very well and played phenomenal defense for them this entire postseason. And when he was needed to, was a leading scorer for them in game four of the, this series. So um, a great story for him as well. And then guys like Michael Porter Jr., the guy had multiple back surgeries before he even got to the league. He, doctors told him he would never play basketball again, he would not go to the NBA. And the Nuggets took a chance on him in the back half of the lottery. And, you know, his shot wasn't falling for, for most of the series. But last game, and even this game more than any, it felt like he had his fingerprints on the, just the feel of the game. 13 rebounds. He's scrapping for, you know, on the defensive side of the ball. He's crashing the glass. Um, you know, and he, he's putting his head down. He understands that the shots aren't falling from three, so he's trying to get into the paint. There's just, just so many good storylines from this, this Nuggets team. And uh, it, it's honestly well-deserved for the, the fan base. Like, like I said, the, the longest drought from becoming an NBA team to finally getting your first championship. Um, and, and the players on this roster, just the storylines there, it's, it's well-deserved. One thing that is interesting to think about about this team and everything you've just said about Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., all the adversity that they had to face, um, do you think that they would have won a championship sooner if it wasn't for all the problems that they faced, like all the injuries, Jamal Murray tearing his ACL, Michael Porter Jr. injuring himself? It's like, because Jokic has been this level of player for the past, what, three, two, three years. He's been at this level. Jamal Murray, we've seen in the bubble, he was playing out of his mind. Michael Porter Jr. has been, I mean, he's improved, obviously, but Michael Porter Jr. has been solid. They got Aaron Gordon. I believe this is what their second year with Aaron Gordon, second, third year with Aaron Gordon. So, like, he's been on the roster. I think the only thing that's really different was the Bruce Brown signing, the KT mm -hmm. signing. So, um, besides a couple of those role players who really stepped up for them, uh, it's interesting to see if they never got injured, would they have won a championship sooner? Yeah, it's always going to be tough to say. Like, hindsight is always going to be twenty twenty, but, mm -hmm. like – it's hard to argue with the results, right? Like they yeah. finally got one healthy run. And and obviously that plays a big factor into it. Like they didn't switch their starting lineup one time this entire playoffs. And mm -hmm. really their rotation didn't, didn't change at all. The entire playoffs, they were able to stay healthy throughout the entire playoff run, which you, know, you can't, it's like that's part of what going goes into winning a championship. Just sometimes it's the team that's the healthiest wins it all it's just like it's yeah there's a little bit of luck that goes into winning every championship and um so to that point you know if they were able to stay healthy earlier like I, I genuinely think we are seeing the beginning of a five ish five plus year run by this mm -hmm. nuggets team where they have the opportunity to go and get one two more championships you know michael malone was on the podium after saying it's great we got one, but we're not satisfied. You know, we're doing the, the Chris Bosch and LeBron and D. Yeah, not one, the, the not Brown two, Miami. <laughs> not three. Um, but they can so. do it though. They they genuinely like. I'm not. I'm like obviously. They, I'm not saying they're gonna win the next four championships straight, but they have the core. They're all young enough. They have yep. the good coaching. They have the good culture. They have the best player on the planet. Like they have the tools to at least compete for every championship in the next, what, five years, as long as they stay healthy, like they're going to be in the mix. And I'm pretty sure you and I can agree. I, this is, I don't think this is going to be Jokic's only championship. Like I think eventually at some point later down the road, he will get another one. Yep. It's just a matter of, like we said, staying healthy, having the right pieces around them. And because I think but Bruce Brown is probably going to be gone. He's probably going to go get a bag somewhere. But mm -hmm. as long as you build a solid enough roster around your core guys, at the bare minimum, you're going to compete for every championship in the next, what, half a decade. Right. And really outside of just Bruce Brown, this whole team is like their core is locked down. Exactly. For a while. Mm -hmm. um, and they just, you know, kind of slid under the radar because you don't really ever see trades during the finals. But, you know, they just traded for, you know, a first round pick or, or I think a second round pick um, and a late first round pick. Um, for for OKC this year, 
Mm -hmm. Um, So they think they have somebody in mind that they're looking already at probably getting a Bruce Brown type replacement. Um, And you see Christian Braun, who um, I almost want to call him Christian baseline. He was was working in backdoor cuts. Yeah. Um, Playing defense, hustling. He was listening. He's only going to get better. He's only going to improve. Right. And he, Back-to-back championships for him, coming off a, a title in, in college with Kansas. Um, mm-hmm. And then as a rookie now with the Nuggets, is able to get him a ring. So they're, they're clearly understand that they're in that unique position, that they're starting what could be the beginning of a dynasty run or at least just dominance and, and contention in the West. Um, so they're looking to consolidate assets and just do whatever they can to – maximize this core um mm-hmm. like you said we're we are watching one of the greats in Jokic. we're watching a great duo in you know him and jamal murray and you want to squeeze as much juice out of that orange as you can get if you're the nugget so um smart play by them on going out and getting those draft picks and um Look, they just continue to put the right guys around them. Like you said, this could be the start of a half decade or longer run um, where I think they're able to get at least another championship, if not more, um, out of this core. And that that resume for Jokic just continues to get better. Um, look, it's also crazy to look at this, this roster. And DeAndre Jordan got himself a ring now. <laughs> Ish Smith. Thomas Thomas Bryant, man. Oh, my God. This guy's asked for a trade from the Lakers. We're (laughs) like, oh, my God. You're about to play no minutes behind Jokic. It's a ring. (laughs) Uh, And beats us in the process. You got to be kidding me, bro. Reggie Jackson ring. Mm -hmm. Um, Really, really guys like uh, Jeff Green and uh, and DeAndre Jordan, it's, like, good to see. It's always good to see guys who – Vets, especially like Jeff Green, who played big minutes for them in this series and has been on this journeyman path and even had that stint where he had to sit out. He had open heart surgery. It's like mm-hmm. this has been a wild career for Jeff Green. And um not sure how much gas he has left in the tank, but look, if this is it for him, this is a hell of a way to go out. Yeah, he might as well. Um, yo, I see Ish Smith really played for – he's in the, been in the league for 13 years, played for 13 teams. That's crazy. That That's kind of wild. Yeah, he like, has – he's the definition. Like, when you when you look up journeyman in the yeah. dictionary, it should just be a picture of Ish Smith. <laughs> Facts. Um, um, they got, they so. definitely got some 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 solid vets that, that got their got their first ring that, that definitely deserved it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I want to transition a little bit to what this really means for Jokic's legacy. Um, I know I've been vocal about being like legacy gets too overblown. Mm-hmm. You know, when we have basketball discussions as fans or in the media, but this is the time where you really have to sit back and just like, when you look at his resume, what he's been able to done, what he's been able to do. Um, and then also consider the fact that, He's only 28. Like, this is the prime of his career. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot of years left. And this feels very similar to the conversation that we, like us, the media fans, were all having about Giannis a couple years ago. It's like, look at all that he's accomplished. and He's just now in his prime. Like, he just now is here. The runway for both of these guys are putting them on that trajectory to say, y'all have potential. Giannis, I think, in a lot of people's eyes, mine included, honestly, is like probably a top five player at his position ever. Um, I think so. And it's starting to, you know, etch his name to, you know, top 20, top 15 and try to get into that (laughs) range. And Jokic is on that trajectory right there looking at, you know, the best centers of all time. They're going to have, trying to become one of the best players of all time. Um, and like I said, um, two MVPs now, a championship and a finals MVP. Um, this is big. If you're a big legacy person, like this is the start of that resume that is, is only going to continue to grow. Like he has multiple all NBAs, multiple all-stars that he's going to continue to earn. And even if he doesn't want to play this, 
crazy long career if he only plays till he's 35. Seven more years. Yeah. That's a lot of basketball left for um, one of the most dynamic and versatile and honestly unique bigs that we've ever seen play the sport of basketball. One thing that's very, very interesting when you bring up Giannis is the fact that, like you said, they're kind of at similar points. When you look at it all the time, basically, how you both, they talked about it. they both have two MVPs. They both won a championship, both have a finals MVP. Uh, both have insane stat lines, both being, I think, 28 and 27 years old. So the one thing that is really going to be interesting is the fact that these guys are going to compete against each other in their primes for, like you said, what, five to seven years going at it. I'm pretty – like, I think we can both agree that Giannis – I think he'll win another championship eventually. I think Jokic will win another championship eventually. But they could be on a course to, like they, – they could be playing each other. They could be battling out for those championships. I'd love to see that. A, a full-strength Bucks team, a full-strength Nuggets team. That series would be insane That for the people that think Giannis is still the best player in the league, for the people that think Jokic is the best player in the league. They could be battling out in the finals and really see who the best player on the planet is. So I, I just think for the years to come, these guys will have some insane battles. They'll both be putting knocks on each other's resumes if they say they end up meeting in the finals. They one beats the other person, one beats the other person. I'm not I'm not gonna go as far to say like Magic Bird, but like depending on how their careers go, mm -hmm. this we could look back on this like. 10, 20 years later and be like, wow, like they're in their this is their era together and they were really battling it out. You know what I mean? So I think that's gonna be interesting uh moving forward. But as far as Jokic and, and his legacy alone, to me, he's already a top six, seven center of all time. It's like it's hard to argue at this point. Like yeah, because even it, like when you take the accolades out of it, like just looking at what he does on the court, like I said we've never seen a big man like this before. I'm mm -hmm. watching this dude catch the ball in the post. They're just throwing it up and he's grabbing it over his head and with, he's not even looking just like behind his back. He's throwing lobs like touch passes like mm -hmm. it's so he has such a unique skill set. And not only is it unique, but it's dominant like it is he is one of the best playmakers we've ever seen he just also happens to be seven foot 280 exactly um yeah. yeah but like like even think about the centers i think right now i mean kareem obviously shaq hakeem bill will that's five after that i mean Jokic has a case. I think, obviously, you know, his career has to go a little bit longer. Like, if he retires today, I don't think he's a top six center ever. But, like, we're just projecting, like, yeah. he's only he's only going to make more in all NBAs. He's going to make more all-star teams. He's going to have all these accolades. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so we're projecting. It's like he's up there with who? Like, David Robinson, Moses Malone, those type of guys. It's like if he keeps going, he eventually wins another championship. Even if he doesn't win another championship, it's like, all those accolades, all those stats, along with the championship and the finals MVP, it's like it's, it's going to be hard to keep them out of those top center of all time conversations. Yep. I have the list here of all the players who have won multiple regular season MVPs and additionally a finals MVP and a championship, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, Kareem, Bill Russell, Michael Jordan, Wilt Chamberlain, LeBron, Moses Malone, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Tim Duncan, Steph, Giannis, and now Jokic. The same company. Very, very, <laughs> very elite and small group of players. There's mm -hmm. a lot of phenomenal NBA players that have not and will not ever reach that combination and he's only going to get better right and he's and just he's just starting. only 28 it's just that like you said it's crazy how we, we literally had this same conversation with Giannis it is like insane to see but I'm so happy that it's both of these guys because they're, I'm, 
I just got a feeling they're going to be battling it out for years to come, and it's going to be, it's going to be so good to watch, bro. It's going to be so fun to watch. Oh my god, I can't wait. But, yeah, I I cannot. I, I would if we ever get a Bucks Nuggets finals. Oh I don't know, my, my life god. Saved is <laughs> we might we might have to go to one of those. Yeah. <laughs> we, might have, we might have to take a trip to one of those games, bro. Man, that's good. and it's like two small market teams, two teams that were patient with their superstars. Two actually two teams that didn't even know they really had superstars. They kind of stumbled upon it. <laughs> two of the best players in the league, but uh, they were patient, and it it paid off, man. It it paid off. It's it's great to see. The basketball fan in me is, like, very excited. The Lakers fan in me is, like, scared to death. <laughs> like, the Lakers fan in me is scared to death of what's about to come with these Denver Nuggets, man. But as a basketball fan, though, I would I would love to see, like, Jokic turn this into some sort of dynasty or just be a contending team for years to come. It, it would be so great to watch. Let me ask you this, because this has been on my mind the last couple of days with it always is going to happen, right? People are always going to try to spin narratives up out of nowhere to discredit something. You see it every single year. People always want to put an asterisk on championship runs. Do you think that this was a cakewalk run for the Nuggets? No, not at all. And you can't, and whoever is saying that it was a cakewalk run, I would love to see who they picked to come out of the West. I would love to see who they picked in the Phoenix versus Nuggets series. I would love to see who they picked in the Lakers versus Nuggets series. Like, no, it was not a cakewalk run. You pl- First of all, you have no control over who you play. Right. You play whoever is lined up against you. Like, that, that's all you can do. You can't choose your opponents. You can't avoid your opponents. It's not like they were, like, losing games to get a lower seed to play a lesser opponent. Like, they weren't – there was none of that going on. You can't choose who you play. And – they they beat everyone in front of them handedly. Like it's not like they they didn't struggle with anybody. If we're being completely honest, even the 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 Suns got two games off them. I don't think they they didn't struggle with the Suns. I never felt like that series was really in doubt. To be honest, I felt like the Suns yeah. did a good job of protecting home court. But when push come to shove, they took care of the Phoenix Suns. Lakers. We all, we all saw Game Six. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like Minnesota. Okay, everyone knew the Nuggets was going to win that series. The Suns. There was a lot of people. Who picked the Suns to win that? Nuggets took a care lot of, of big media people that picked the Suns to win that series. It's exactly. a lot of people that had the Suns coming out of the West. As soon as they see KD and D book, they're like, oh, too much. It's just too much. Too much talent. Too much talent. Right. Lakers. And this is coming from a Lakers fan. A lot of people picked the Lakers. A lot of people thought it was going to be a good series, a long series. Rightfully so. It was Lakers was a good team. Swept them. It like, was competitive, but they just but had a little bit day, more in every game. At the end of the day. The Lakers didn't win a game. Like, if I'm just being completely honest, like yeah. Lakers fan aside, they didn't win a game. So, if we're going to call it how it is, dominated the Lakers. Got to the finals. I mean, a lot of pick, obviously, a lot of people picked the Nuggets, but like I said, they can't, you can't choose who you play against. And let's not act like this Miami Heat team is a bad team. They beat the Bucks in five games. I understand Giannis missed some games, but when he came back, he didn't win a single game. Right. So they beat the Bucks in five games, went to the Knicks, beat the Knicks in five games, who was a, a lot of people thought was a good team. Went to the Celtics. Went up 3-0 in the Celtics. Like, they beat these teams. Like, they the, the Heat had a very tough run to the finals, but they beat all of them and were clearly the best team in that whole run. So when they got to the finals, I felt like the two best teams in the league, the Heat versus the Nuggets. Like, the, the Heat didn't get here on no fluky run. They beat all of these teams to right. get here. And they ran into the best team in the league and got handled in five games. So... All that, like, easy run to the final. Like, you can put an asterisk on every single championship possible. Like, if name every single finals in NBA history. I can guarantee you, you can nitpick and find some sort of asterisk. Some, right. Somebody got hurt. Somebody got a tag. Somebody, this is a bad call, whatever. Like, yeah. you, that's, bro, that's basketball. That's sports, right? That's mm-hmm. part of it. Like we just said, part of winning any championship in any sport there's some luck involved. Like mm-hmm. sometimes people do get hurt. Sometimes it's on your team. Sometimes it's the other team. Like that just yeah. is how the cookie crumbles. Like, like if, if we knew what was going to happen before the gameplay, nobody would watch. Exactly. Like that's part of why people love sports. It's part of why people love the NBA finals. 
like you still have to go out and execute and to sit up here and say that okay well when you look at it the the nuggets played at eight seed or the suns the four seed and they played the seven seed and they played another eight seed oh this is this is such a soft run to the finals you can't look at it like that the only guaranteed team that they had to play in the entire playoffs was the minnesota timberwolves that's it so they had to play one eight seed it's not their fault that the Grizzlies lost. It's not their fault that any of the – it's not their fault that they played any of the other teams that they got. If you wanted a different matchup, the other team should have won. They if you should've. wanted to see the Nuggets better. Are bright, if you want to see Denver and Boston, Boston shouldn't have went down 3-0. Boston should have beat Miami. They didn't mm-hmm. because they didn't have what it took to win that series. It's a lot of media people who have already started that whole, this whole, this is a soft run, whatever. Like the the legacy shouldn't be that big because who did they really play? I don't know Chris Mannix personally. You might be a great guy. I don't know you. And it's a lot of people that are doing it, but you're the one that I'm going to talk about right now because you've been the, the brunt of most of it. You've been one of the most open about it. First, you came out during the playoffs and said, the Nuggets aren't an exciting team to talk about. You work for Sports Illustrated, one of the head writers at Sports Illustrated, said that the Nuggets are not an exciting team to talk about. They're not. There's no storylines there. We just spent like 20 minutes just scratching the surface on Jamal Murray, Aaron Gordon, MPJ, Jokic, Jeff Green, DeAndre Jordan, like just lightly talking about like all of their journeys up until this point. Bro, you're a writer. It's all that's your job. It's always stories there. Like mm-hmm. there's always stories there, bro. Like part of your job is to not like you can define what the readers and fans are excited to talk about. The reason why sports coverage gets so hyper focused on the Lakers, the Celtics, the Knicks, if you go into other sports, the Cowboys, the Patriots, like just the big market teams. It's because that's where they know the most viewership is. They all care about is clicks, views, rating. So they're always going to try to appease to those top teams. You get to these moments where the best player in basketball is in Denver. And there's a lot of people who are casual NBA fans who may have really just watched him seriously play for the first time in this series. That's a problem. And people like him and the larger media as a whole, y'all are a part of that problem. Like, Y'all should be enjoying the NBA and not just like four teams. Thanks. Like the Lakers don't need to be in every conversation. The Celtics don't need to be in every conversation. Thanks. Like in addition to that, Chris Mannix is one of the people who said that this Nuggets run is not as big as people are hyping it up to be, right? It's not this huge, you know, like they just steamrolled over everybody. They're better than them. There was no, there, it would, he said there was no real competition for them. He wrote an article that said the Lakers were going to come out of the West. <laughs> that LeBron is healthy. Austin Reeves is playing great. AD is playing great. Look out. The Lakers are coming out of the West. Pick the Lakers to beat the Nuggets. But, but now but it's because, no competition. Right, right. But because, because they got swept. Oh, it wasn't really that close, so it, it couldn't have been no competition. I, I hate that so much. I I genuinely hate that because it used to piss me off when people used to do that with the Lakers. Pick the pick the Warriors to beat us, and then be like, actually looking back at it, the Warriors weren't even that good in the first place. But then why'd you pick them? Right. Why'd you pick it? If the Lakers was this, I I hate that your point. You're making me bash my own team, but it's just facts. It's like you picked the Lakers to win, so that means you thought that they were a competitive team. So right. if they swept them, don't go back and be like, oh, actually, they weren't really that competitive in the first place. No, no, they the Nuggets were just better and just a lot better because they swept them. Like, I hate when I hate when media people do that. That pisses me off so much. It's it's so lame to me. Like, it's really lame because it's you're just like that's just like discrediting everything that we just saw. Like, mm-hmm. You want team like players, superstars to perform like Jokic performed. He had a dominant playoff run. He's the first player to ever lead a postseason in every all three of those major statistical categories: points, rebounds, and assists. And for doing that, 
it had, it had to be because everybody he played against sucked. He can't just be that much better. He can't just exactly. play that much more. He can't just be dominant. It's the narrative has to oh, play the eight seed, a four seed, a seven seed, and eight seed. Cakewalk run. There, people are gonna forever continue to say this. Like it's, it's always so and people do this about every single championship. And to me, bro, like that's pathetic. Like, bro, you don't even feel like a fan of basketball at that point. Like, even You're not. if it's like you have a fandom towards a particular team and you don't like whoever won, whatever the case may be, bro. Like at the end of the day, bro, if you really like basketball, bro, you would just sit back and think about this series and think about this run and be like, wow, we just saw something that's never been done before. We're watching one of the greatest players to ever put on a pair of basketball shoes ever. He's only 28 we could be watching the beginning of something very, very special. I'm happy to be watching this right now. Mm -hmm. But instead, some of y'all just all y'all just have to have something to hate on. You have to have something to hate on. You watch the game through a hater's lens. Like, why do you watch the game and think, how can I discredit this? Like, instead of just admiring it. Yo, but you don't have to say nothing. <laughs> you really don't, don't have to have anything to say. But you choose to try to discredit something. Like, just admit you don't like basketball. That's really what it is. Just admit you don't like basketball. You like the drama. Like, bro, go watch, like, some Housewives show, bro. Like, y'all like drama, bro. <laughs> all right, go watch some reality is. TV. Go watch go The watch Bachelorette or something. Like. Thank you, bro. Y'all don't like basketball, bro. Y'all like all the extra off-the-court drama, legacy, this, discredit this, I'm hating on this, like, I like all of that, bro. Right. And y'all like, like it for the, the wrong reasons. That's really what it is. Because yeah. you can like the off the court, the stories, like I said, all the other things that come with it that build up the game. But no, all y'all do is like the negative parts. You like the debates, tearing somebody down. Which is it's weird. Never, right. It's so weird, bro. It's really, it's lame. And, and they do it every single year. This one in particular feels so much more stupid because it's like, bro, like, what do you want either of these teams to do? By doing this, y'all are trying to discredit the Heat. It's like, oh, look, look at how well they shot against every other team and they play the Nuggets and they shoot bad. Bro, that is basketball. Also, the Nuggets played their defensive intensity after game two, game three, four, and five on a whole different level. Like, it's... Sometimes, bro, it's just how the people are performing on the court. It's not so black and white. You can't just look at the box score and be like, oh, somebody shot 41% this series, and now they're shooting 16%. Oh, look at this. They're so lucky. Bro, do you think he's just trying you think he's just trying to miss? Right. Like, oh, we're playing the Nuggets now. Let me just let me just miss now. Like, come on, bro. Like, I, and if you just look at it from a common sense thing, it's like. There are 32 teams in basketball. The Nuggets. Oh, my bad. Sorry. I'm thinking of football. My fault. <laughs> there's 30, 32. There are 30 teams in basketball. The Nuggets came. There's 16 teams to make the playoffs. The Nuggets came out on top. So everyone else just sucks. Like, like right. is that what you're telling me? Everyone else just stinks. Apparently, like, bro. Apparently, like, the red, it was just the Nuggets and everybody. Nobody else was even, bro. Like, everybody else just, stunk, bro. Bro, if that was the case, bro, y'all should have just gave them the ring in November. Exactly. Like everyone else just stinks. They had no like all their stars stink. All the teams are garbage. Like it was they were lucky. It was a cakewalk. Like, what are we talking about, bro? Do you genuinely think like that's how it worked out? Seriously. And there's people who go to and the sad part about it is there's people who are gonna like read that article or listen or probably a fan of I don't even know the guy you're talking about, if I'm gonna be completely honest. But there's people who are gonna watch that stuff and actually believe it. Like, hell wait, they did play a seven seed Lakers, they did play a eight seed Heat. Maybe that was a cake run, like Come on, bro. Stop. You're influencing. Like, stop, bro. Just stop. That is the biggest problem with all of it. And that's what really gets me is because, bro, y'all are working for the largest media networks in sports. The people on Fox, ESPN, Sports Illustrated with these takes, bro. And it's mm -hmm. like the average fan who may not have the luxury of watching every game during the regular season. They might not have league pass. They only keep up. You know, they watch a couple games every year, and they might watch more during the playoffs, whatever. They go to these type of outlets to fill in those gaps on the coverage, bro, and this is yeah. what they're hearing. And then you get people that buy into it. 
Like just spreading negativity, bro. Right. I don't, I, bro. I'll go further than that. I, don't, I think it's just false. Like yeah. <laughs> it's just blatantly wrong. I don't like. I'm. I'm never one to always just be like, like, bro. People gonna have their opinions. This is just stupid, bro. And it's just dumb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I said, they do it with every single championship run. This one just feels so much more stupid because it's like, bro, it's just dominance. And you're at the same time trying to discredit the Heat for getting out of the East, bro. They clearly just wanted it more. Look at how they play basketball. Yeah, bro. Even in the game last night, back against the wall, dudes are throwing their bodies all over the court. They just don't want to go home. They clearly just have a different gear in their head that these other teams didn't, which is why they beat Milwaukee, because Milwaukee's probably thinking about the finals in the first round. Oh, Mm -hmm. well, y'all should have been focused on the Heat. They beat the Knicks. The Celtics probably thought the same thing. It's like, oh, wow, we're one, we're one series away from getting right back to where we were last year, blinked, and we're down 0-3. Mm-hmm. Just too big of a deficit to come out of. Like, nothing was given to this Heat team. Nothing was given to this Nuggets team. So take this series for what it is, because to me it's still like being a five-game series, aside from, um, what was it, game three that kind of, or game four that kind of got out of hand for the Heat. Yeah. All these games were competitive close very physical to me this was an exciting series to watch like i enjoyed it what do you think about people who think that this nba finals was boring because i've seen that a lot too that this was not that entertaining that they didn't really care for it um but what do you think about people that say that i think that a lot of people are so used to watching us like so both of these teams play a very good very good team basketball. And a lot of people are so used to watching, like, the stars, the Steph Curry taking over, the LeBron taking over, the Jason Tatum, like, whoever. They're so used to watching the star. And it's because it's so easier to to see what's going on. It's like a casual viewer, like, okay, Curry's out there shooting deep threes and has 40 points. Like, it's so easy to see that that's, like I, – I mean, I get it. It's exciting, like, and it's easy to, like, tell what's going on. When you're watching Bam Adebayo at the top of the key – hitting Duncan Robinson in the back door cut. Like, if you really like basketball, you'll see, like, okay, I see how one play, that he came off the all-ball screen and came, and popped out for a three. Another play, they cut to the basket. Like, it's – when you know basketball, it's kind of – it's easy to see that and be like, okay, I see why that's – why that worked. Or, like, it's inter, it's entertaining to you. When you're a casual, it's like, unless I see a step back three over somebody because that's a three, like, this is not fun for me to watch. Like, so I, I understand why a casual would say that it's boring. But to me personally, I think this series was – I think it was a good series. Like, I like watching the adjustments that the coaches make. I like seeing how those adjustments – or I like seeing the adjustments to the adjustments, you know what I mean, from the other right. coach. Like, I like seeing that type of stuff. And along with all that, you still got start – like, we had a two 30-point triple-doubles. In the same the, game. In the same game. And that wasn't entertaining. Like, well, regardless of how the game turned out, that's entertaining in itself. Like, I think watching Jokic in general is entertaining. Like, some people think his game is boring. I think it's entertaining to watch. Like, he's dominating the game. Yep. From whether it's passing, scoring, rebounding, he's dominating the game. That's entertaining to watch. Like, I think Bam Adebayo played great. I think he was very entertaining to watch this whole series. Like, great defensive moments, even good offensive moments. Like, bro, the – the series was entertaining. Yeah, the outcome, like, it's 4-1. to one. It's a five-game series. So, like, the Nuggets were in control most of the time. But if you just go game by game, moment by moment, even the game, like you said, even the games that ended up being, like, the Nuggets, like, excuse me, even the games that ended up having the Nuggets with a comfortable lead, throughout most of the point of that game, it was entertaining. So, I just think people are so used to the insane, star-driven type game, star taking over type of games that's like when you get games like this which is coaching team basketball smart basketball with a little bit of physicality in there it's just it's not as entertaining to the casual eye, to the my bad to the untrained yeah. eye <laughs> it's not it's not as entertaining and i think a lot of people are spoiled too a lot of people are spoiled because in recent years we watched some of the greatest finals ever like 2016 yep. greatest finals ever like we watch the best player ever play. You got the best shooter ever play. So I think I think a lot of times people are spoiled, but regardless, I think this is a very entertaining series. Yeah, to 
I think that's a fair point about how casual we view this series or people that just aren't, you know, as locked into the NBA or like you said, the chess match, because there was a point last night's game where it's like, obviously when, when Jokic got into foul trouble, he got real comfortable, got back into their zone. Jokic comes back onto the court and they have, I think it was KCP in the corner and Christian Braum on the wing. Jokic is at the, the top of the keys holding the ball. He sends Braun on a wing cut, is staring him down as he comes through the lane. And I think it was Caleb Martin is in the corner on KCP. And just that little eye attention steps Caleb Martin in just two steps off of KCP. And he just to the corner instantly, open three. Those little things like that to a casual fan is probably just like, okay. He had a three. Right. But it's like just watching the <clears throat> level of execution by these coaching staffs, these players, like, that was so entertaining throughout this entire postseason and this finals in particular. So look, at the end of the day, tell me y'all just need to sit down and enjoy basketball. And if y'all don't, I need to take a hard look in the mirror if you want to keep watching this year in, year out. Because like you said, maybe y'all need to go watch reality TV, go watch Housewives, Bachelorette or something, because y'all just like negativity and drama 24-7. But and if you don't think the Nuggets are entertaining, you better buckle up, buddy. Because they're, right. <laughs> they're not go, going anywhere. Know, this might not be your sport. You need to go watch something else for the next five, six years. Yeah, yeah you better this buckle up. This team is not going anywhere. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, credit to the Nuggets. This is well-deserved. Credit to Jokic and Murray and the coaching staff, Michael Malone. Um, like, this Nuggets team did it the right way. They kept their guys together. Um, and they are finally um, reaping the benefits of that. So. Well deserved. Congratulations to Denver. And uh, yeah, we are now officially in the off season. And all that means is I think we got 10 or nine days till the draft summer league next month. You know, Ooh. the games, the regular season postseason goes to a stop, but the game don't stop. Not at all. The game never, it never stops. does. Um, so even with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and get right into some more of the rumors that have been dropping since the last time we recorded. Um, one of the first ones I've seen, Bradley Beal has been linked to Philadelphia as a potential destination um, for him this upcoming season. What would you think about if they potentially lose Harden to, to Houston and replace him with a guy like Bradley Beal in Philly? I like it. I think it's I think it's good. I feel like Embiid, well, as a big man, mostly, especially a, a big man like Jokic aside, Jokic is in a whole another level. But a traditional big man who n- kind of needs to get set up a little bit, needs someone to give him the ball in the post, needs someone to run that pick and roll with him. Um, you need one a guard that can help him out and get, and put him in positions to be great, but also someone who can take attention off of him and score the basketball. Like the games that in the playoffs, the games that James Harden played well. Obviously, you see they won. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying Bradley Beal got to come in and drop 40 every game. But you just need someone who consistently can get you a bucket, especially from the perimeter. Like, all great big men, even – honestly, even Jokic uh, a lot of times, all great big men I feel like need a guard on the perimeter who can score, who can close games, who can get a bucket. So, I, I would like it. I, I would love to see Bradley Beal finally in a position where you can actually try to compete. You know what I mean? Because those – with I don't think he's been on a, a competitive, a really competitive Wizards team ever. Like, them guy. Him and John Wall had maybe a run or two, but uh, they were yeah. never gonna win. Nothing. Not not they, like competitive in the East. But like exactly. they were, they weren't. They weren't. They were no interesting. Personal. They were yeah. kind of fun, but like they were never really competitive in the East, man. And yeah. Him and him and John Wall just been the uh, the best bag chasers in NBA history, man. Just take, <laughs> taking two hundred million dollar contracts left and right, but uh, I, I would actually I would like to see him um in, in a position where he could actually help out a real contender. So I'm here for it, especially if they lose Harden. I'm here for it. I'm gonna be honest, I don't like it. I really? feel like that does not push the needle for that Sixers team at all, especially if you lose Harden and it's like you bring in Bradley Beal. Like to me, it's not changing too much for me because. If we're being honest, like Bradley Beal was the second option on the Wizards this year behind mm-hmm. Porzingis. And so he doesn't bring too, too much outside of his scoring ability. He's not you know, a fantastic playmaker. I think his efficiency was a lot better this season, being a second option, which is good to see. 
Um, I don't think he's going to make them worse. I just, for the Sixers team, like, they've got to get over the hump. And to me, this does not push the needle far enough in that direction to, like, even if they did, there's a couple teams out east who they can get their, you know, their roster set up right. I would take over the Sixers team still. Um, Mm -hmm. Because they still have a ton of question marks for me. Obviously, the Bucks are a team that has a lot of question marks. The Celtics, too. But it's like if they can get their stuff situated, like both of those teams off the top of my head, um, I would take over the Sixers. And realistically, they have to beat one of them to get into the, the conference finals. And so we're, that's what we're talking about, to get over just that hump, just to even make it to the Eastern Conference finals. I don't know if Bradley Beal is that guy. Um, but we'll see. Interested to see how that all kind of plays out. Um, Cause I know he has the, the no trade clause in his contract. So that would have to get, you know, sorted out mm-hmm. um, from, from the front office perspective. But um, another rumor that has come out, and I think this one dropped yesterday. This is actually a pretty big one. The Pelicans have been linked to trying to make a trade to get into the top two or three um, picks in the NBA draft to make a play at Scoop Henderson, which Honestly, they have young pieces. They have some draft capital built up that they could all consolidate. And who knows, maybe, look, if if the Hornets aren't too thrilled with the idea of pairing LaMelo and Scoot, maybe that's your best option is you trade the pick, you get, you know, some young talent. I don't know who all exactly be on the table. Um, if I was them, I'd be trying to get guys like Dyson Daniels, Trey Murphy, um, and obviously some picks back as well. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, maybe you're able to trade back up into the draft and maybe you still are able to get Brandon Miller. But to me, that's at least a better option than just passing on school altogether. Um, 100%. But I think that would be very interesting if they were able to to find a way to make a trade with Charlotte or potentially Portland. Um, and I've seen I've seen reports that say if they were made a trade with Portland, CJ might be going back. That'd be crazy. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Dame's like, okay, we can compete again. I got right. I got my guy back. <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> nah, nah, that'd be that's interesting though. Like I said, I I would need to see who else is in the trade. Who who are they keeping? Who are they giving up? But obviously, you're not trading Zion. I don't think you're giving up Bi. So, I mean, that's not bad though. That's definitely that's definitely not a bad young core if Zion could if they could finally be healthy that's actually kind of scary when you think about it a bit a big three between them yeah they're look they're scary if Zion is healthy with the team right now period so it's exactly like you, you bring that in with school you have school bi um and Zion and then whichever you know young role players you're able to keep I'm I'm, I'm assuming Herb Jones is probably off the table for them at this point um, like that is a nice young core that we could see. They were a team that I thought would take a leap similar to what the Grizzlies did being like a play-in team. And the next year they are like a top seed in the West. Yeah. Yeah. It felt like that was going <clears> to <throat> happen. Obviously they had the injuries, which kind of derailed their season, but you know, maybe that's in their cards for them next year. And they become, you know, top three, four seed out West. They're able to to get Zion back healthy and, and finally get a decent season out of you know their core guys there. If I'm Portland though, I'm not trade. I'm not like I like it from the Pelican side, but if I'm the if like if I'm Portland, I'm not trading unless I'm going into like actually no that still doesn't make sense. I was gonna say unless you're going into like a rebuild, I'm not trading that for young pieces and picks. But it's like if you're going to a rebuild, just draft school. So like yeah, for me, what are you getting back? If it's not Zion and or BI, what are you getting back that's worth not just taking school? And if I'm the Hornets, it's like, again, if it's not BI, what am I getting back that's not worth just drafting school? Yeah. And uh, it all goes back to like, if you're Portland, right? All hypothetical, right? Let's say you have a separate trade, you get Damian Lillard out of there, you bring in draft capital, young assets, and you take the third pick and you're able to trade it to the Pelicans, you get. Dyson Daniels or Trey Murphy, maybe both and more picks. And it's like, okay, we're just going full on young. Like you said, 
that point, just take school, right? Like, exactly. exactly. Go for, go. <laughs> just go for, like we already saying, go for the talent. Like, mm-hmm. as good as Trey Murphy um, and, uh, you know, Dyson Daniels can project to be, I'd say School Henderson is a better, at least from a prospect perspective, coming in as a higher touted prospect. So you go for the talent. <laughs> so just take the talent. If, if he I- falls to three, you got to take him. 100 percent only thing i don't like about the draft sometimes is the fact that normally it's the worst organization the most poorly run franchises at the top so they just make dumb Bad decisions, decisions bro. Over and it's, over. it's just bro i can't the i couldn't reason imagine why a lot of these teams stay in the lottery year yeah. after year after year bro <laughs> like even when they get the opportunity like they get that like lottery ticket in their hand they find some way to mess it up every time bro it's crazy yeah <clears throat> yeah, so interesting to see how that one plays out as well, too, because uh, so I can't wait. The like, draft being nine days away, I feel like we're going to get a couple of big trades that are going to happen either I right before so. the draft or on draft day, mm-hmm. um, which will, will shake things up a bit. And like I said, Summer League is going to be coming right after, and we're going to finally get to see – you already know whichever team school is on in Wemby, they're gonna be putting that on prime time. Yeah. They're gonna be going this, at it. This summer, I always love watching summer league. Like even when it's not like the top, like the draft isn't like crazy. I always love to watch the summer league. I feel like this one's gonna be, bro. This was gonna be crazy. Like yeah. Wim, even Wimby aside with school, there's a lot of good players in this draft, bro. I th- I yeah. think this summer league is gonna be a real good one. Yeah, I think it's gonna be great. And then I and look, you still got all the, the rookies from this year that are gonna be playing in it. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm excited for summer league. I'm excited for the draft. Excited for the offseason too, because that as much as I love watching the game and watching the playoffs, like the offseason is always gonna be one of the most exciting times for an NBA fan because mm-hmm. it's when you get the most shakeup, right? Like yeah. teams have to make those decisions that are gonna set themselves up for the future or you know, kick the can and just, you know, just go into full rebuild mode. So uh, I'm really excited. I think that this, like I said, with, with how the playing tournament went this year, with how you continue now to see teams who just stay together and build it the right way are winning the, the most recent championships. Now the Nuggets mm-hmm. <laughs> getting themselves added to that list. Um, GMs have got a lot of work to do. they got a lot of work to do this all season. 100 percent um we want to pivot over to something that you sent over um building a roster around a specific nba player with some stipulations added to it a couple of different rules to follow um we're gonna see who could who could construct the best roster around a particular star you have a player in mind that you thought of so um i think we should go with all-time greats you know what I mean, okay. we're gonna we're gonna build around an all time great, and the rules are we're gonna do one superstar, as in like mm-hmm. one what top ten to twelve player, current, current yes, only okay. current players. Okay, we can do one superstar, one all star, and you want to do one rookie? or You want to just do role players after that? Mm, rookie might be clean. I like rookie. Okay, so what? Is it? So we got the superstar. Yeah. I'm mean, sorry, we got the legend. We got the superstar. We got the all star, we got the role player, and we got a rookie. Okay. All right. And I feel like we might as well start big. So, okay. Let's build the perfect roster around Michael Jordan. Hey, yo. Okay. Okay. We might as well. So, I will try my, I'll let you go first, like with your picks. I will try my best to not, you know, mirror you. Hey, this is. I I got, I got, I got, I got my superstar. I got my superstar in mind. Mind you, this is no injuries. This is just. At their best, the current players in the league, who would you who would you pick? You can start with your superstar. Superstar to put next to <clears throat> Michael Jordan. And I'm I'm gonna write, let me write this list down so I can make sure we got it. Hmm. I got, got two people all. in mind. Two people in mind. Just what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. If we were talking about we no injuries, right? People are healthy. Imagine a fully healthy Kawhi. Oh my God! <laughs> Michael no. Jordan. 
Oh, that was my pick, bro. bro. That was my pick, bro. This is like, bro, it's like Scotty Pippen 2.0, but the <laughs> offense is low key better. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm saying, bro. But wait, that was, but wait. Bro, that was my this what guy. I'm also, this what I'm, this what I'm also thinking. Mm-hmm. Imagine now, who who the, who's the best center Michael Jordan's ever played with? The best center, I mean. Bill Cartwright. Uh, Bill Cartwright. Yeah, because he never played. He, oh, he has power forwards with Bill Cartwright, probably. All right. Imagine Michael Jordan and Jokic. That would be nasty. That two man game would be crazy. That would be nasty. And Jokic don't really care about scoring. Like MJ can score all he want. Right. Like that feels like the perfect superstar center to put next to to MJ. He could get out the way. He could space the floor. Like, he's still going to do the dirty work, rebounds, facilitate. That offense is going to be moving perfect. Mm -hmm. Because I also feel like I can feel what I could get from Kawhi a couple of different places. Hey, man. I'm to get another big. Hey, man. Jokic. I'm I'm going to actually go Jokic. I'm going to go Jokic. Okay, okay, okay. Bet. So. <clears throat> your team around MJ, well, your center around MJ, your superstar is going to be Nikola Jokic. So, since you didn't go Kawhi, <laughs> I'm going to go Kawhi Leonard because I the same the same thought process. I just thinking like, bro, he's Scotty Pippen 2.0. He's All right. you're going to get at his like at his peak. You're going to get a elite elite defender who can still give you elite offense efficiency. Like, come on, it's just. For me, it was a no brainer to go Kawhi. It, I, with the aside Jokic, it was it was Jokic and Kawhi, honestly. Mm-hmm. So after that, then we're gonna go one All Star. Okay. So do you want to do people who only made the All Star this year, or are you just talking about like whoever's? Made I was the looking at All Stars this year. Okay, bad, bad, bad. Okay. Let me pull hmm. the All Star Ross. Let me refresh my memory a little bit. And this, is, this can't this can't be a, a top ten to twelve player. Okay, okay, mm, that makes it a little bit more interesting. All right. Mm-hmm. Um. Hmm. Ooh, that's an interesting choice. That might be who I pick. Actually, now that I'm looking at it again, because I can't take my Tatum is too good. Yeah. yeah, he's like, yeah, can you can't do Tatum. Okay. I'm gonna go with somebody that might be a little bit surprising. But I'm gonna take Jaron Jackson. Bro, I hate that you know basketball, bro. I really do. <laughs> like, I'm looking at this list, I'm like, I'm taking Jaron Jackson. <laughs> I'm looking at it because like we need, you know, we got Jokic, we got MJ, now we got Another big that could stretch the floor. That triangle gonna be smooth. It's a lot of space on the block. <laughs> right. Um, but you know, elite, elite rim protection. Um, so you can keep Jokic in the, the pick and roll, which sidebar, they also need to dead that narrative too. Like watching yeah. him defend mm-hmm. the pick and roll this series, he's doing such a great job at just Fundamental, basic, show, get back, show, get back. Right. Be big, show your hands. Like, he's doing all that really well. So, you keep him in the, the pick and roll coverage, have Jared play that, you know, Robert Williams type free safety every roll come over, you know what I'm saying, off the glass. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to go with Jared Jackson as my all-star. Okay, okay. That definitely, definitely a good pick. Definitely a good pick. Now – I gotta shake some things up because I was gonna pick Jaron Jackson. So now let me let me shake it up a little bit. And my options are between because I already have obviously MJ's playing the two. I got Kawhi at the three. It is like it doesn't have to be center or yeah. just a big man. You know what I mean? So my option right now, I honestly, and this might be looked at as like a a, a wild pick. It was between. Like a Drew Holiday mm. to run my one, I, my defense is yeah lot. <laughs> you know I love bro. I love players who can play defense. I love two way players. My defense would be clamps. He can still run my offense, 
Um, he can still set my guys up. He doesn't have to score. He can space the floor. Yeah, I might have just I might have just talk myself into it. I might. I think I'm gonna go. I'm I'm gonna go Drew Holiday. That and look, if if Jaren wasn't on this list, that's who I would have took. Okay. So you got Jokic, Triple J. So we got the superstar. We got the all star out the way. I got Kawhi and I got Drew Holiday. Okay. So now we're gonna go with the role player. Hmm. I'm gonna need to think about this one. Let me think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your listen. Take your time. I, I listen. I don't know who my role player is gonna be. Hmm. <clears throat> and I need a like a a wing. I need a point guard and a wing. Mm-hmm. I okay. need what? I, oh, I need two bigs. Damn. Hmm. What would I really want? Like we don't. I honestly, we just need shooting. I don't need nobody else that's really a scorer like that. Hmm. Oh, that's a good one. Ooh. Okay. 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 I also there's some good options here. Some good options. Off the top of my head, just kind of like looking around the league. One of the first people that came to mind actually was Malcolm Brogdon mm-hmm. and Tyus Jones. I like solely them. for. I love I like, love the Tyus Jones one. I was right. thinking of him. He don't make no wrong decisions. He's gonna set everybody up. I don't, need you. I don't need you to do nothing special, bro. He's playing with MJ. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what bro. Do? <clears throat> Put that ball in the post, bro. I don't need you to do right. nothing else. I, I, I love I, if you go tight, I would listen. I'm here for it. I love that pick. But let me let me see one more thing. Let me I'm gonna I'm gonna do some pre scouting. <laughs> I mean, let me let me you look at the it. let me look at the rookies for this year. Um, because that may change how I uh, how I go for this role player because. I may get a rookie point guard. Let me see something. Oh, I just thought of, I just thought of a role player. I might, I, I might have to that take that too. Mm, okay, that might actually be the move. Dang, I can't do Paolo. That would be too big. Him or Sohan. But I want somebody that could play some defense. I'm about to say, you still got – you got to think. I, like, I'm trying to plan out my rookie and my role player. Cause I, right. Because I, I know – you're going to have the first pick of the rookie. I know you're going to choose Paolo. I feel like – I feel like you got to choose Paolo. Unless he, he don't I work don't know. Team. It's going to be – he's going to be too big. Like – Who you got? Dude? He can't oh, you got Jokic and Triple J. Little, right. Shooting is a little – you know, it's going to mess up the spacing. Mm-hmm. What Caruso play my one? <laughs> <laughs> he could. Oh uh, man, this is tough. This is tough. Me. Hmm. Dang. And bro, and I'm got Bruce Brown in my head too. Hmm. Mm. This is hard. This is hard. I, ooh, I think I might have. I think I might have just did some. I think. think. I think I might have just did some. I'm playing. I got my people already planned out. Okay. I think I am going to take. <sighs> Dang. Ah, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Brogdon. I'm gonna go with Brogdon. He Malcolm just brings Brogdon. more two way <clears throat> than, than Tyus does. Better defender. Okay. Um, I and he's still. I, I think he probably is a better shooter than Tyus too. I think Tyus yeah. is a better decision maker, better playmaker. But we already got Jokic. We don't even need you to do that. We That's get facts. out there. Need somebody that could potentially be a ball stopper as well with MJ. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Brogdon. All right. So. Since this is all right, so I see your team, right? You already got Jokic, Triple J, so you can't go no more big men for the rookie. 
So I know you, you say you can't pick Paolo. So that changes who I'm going to pick with my role player. So that means I'm probably going to slide Paolo. So that means I'm probably going to need a center. I got Drew Holiday. I got MJ. I got Kawhi. I Ooh. want a center who can space the floor. I already, I, as soon as you said that, I was like, I know who's <laughs> perfect here. I want a center who can space the floor for my role player. So I was thinking Brooke Lopez would be a nice option. Splash Mountain. Listen, because he could listen, he could space the floor for me. He could still give me rebounding. He could still give me elite defense. I, I'm a honest, it was between when I thought you were gonna pick Paolo, I was gonna I was gonna pick Robert Williams. Mm. But I, I think the spacing is not gonna be good enough. So I'm a, I'm gonna actually go Brooke Lopez. Okay. I like you gonna, that. You're going to mess all my plans. Or you're going to be like, I'm picking Paolo. I'm putting nah. Three. <laughs> <laughs> nah. So I've got Brogdon at the one, MJ at the, the two or the three, depending. And mm-hmm. then we got Jared Jackson and Jokic. Need one more person. Defense is looking good. Hmm. Honestly, I've got, I'm looking at two guys here. Realistically, yeah. I'm torn between J Dub and Benedict Matherin. I really like Benedict Matherin's game. Mm-hmm. But J Dub, I like I like J Dub. Also, J-Dub's nice. Smooth. Yeah, J-Dub's he, nice. The both of them are scrappy on defense. J Dub mm-hmm. a little bit more more consistent shooter. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Mm, okay. What do I really need here? That might be like defense is I think we already good on a lot. So I could go J dub, but Benedict Matherin also I think would be a nice fit. Is there anybody I'm missing? Like let me scroll through make sure I'm not missing. <laughs> hey, Kenny Lofton. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Bro- so Brogdon, MJ. Yeah, defense is defense is there. Defense nice. is there with good spe- I like your team. Your team is very, very solid. If I'm just solely going off of this year and not trying to look on potential, I'm going to go with Ah, dang, bro. How tall is Benedict Matthew? I need to look over <laughs> Six, six, two, ten. Put up 17 a night. Dang. And then J-Dub. Six, six. <laughs> better efficiency. Better. Sh- I'm going to go with J-Dub. I'm going to go with Jalen Williams. Out of okay. the, the, this is the Santa Clara Jalen Williams for y'all to make sure y'all don't get it confused. Right. All right. <clears throat> all right. Um all right, bet. And then I feel like you know, I gotta go Paulo. Like Fair, yeah. I, I I I can't pass that up. I gotta go Paulo. So the team the perfect team around MJ, your team is Jokic, Triple J, Brogdon, Jalen Williams, MJ. Obviously, my team is Kawhi, Drew Holiday, Brooke Lopez, Paulo Ben or uh, yeah, Paulo Ben Carroll, and MJ. So y'all y'all let us know which team y'all think is the best. Just Ooh. This is these some nice teams though. These some nice teams. See, this might be the one we have to put in two K. This this might be the one we got. This put is in this 2K. is this might be the one. Bring that bring that to the blacktop first and foremost. <laughs> <laughs> we got Brogdon, MJ, J Dub, Triple J. The defense is there. The spacing is there. Yep. We got Jokic who could damn near run a one. Right. Like, <laughs> Set everybody up. I got Kawhi. My defense is crazy, though. Like, my defense is Kawhi and MJ is crazy. <laughs> With Drew Holiday. Yeah. Like, dang. And Brooke Lopez. In the, nah, my team is crazy. My defense is insane. I like this, though. This, I, this, is, this is a fun one. We, got, we definitely got to keep doing more of these. This oh, yeah. Fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. I like this one a lot. This is, yeah. this is real fun. Damn, man, man. We in the thick of the off season now. Like we are here. It's been a long time coming, but we are in the off season officially. 
Yeah. I said, I think the let me double check. It might be it's either ten or nine days away to draft. Um, nine days, seven hours, fifty eight minutes, fifty eight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, until Wembenyama is a San Antonio Spur, and then I don't know what Charlotte gonna do, but it's exciting, man. This is look. As exciting as the season was, as exciting as the finals was, for a lot of NBA fans, this is okay, the best time of the year, one of the best times of the year at least. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you're going to get rumors and news 24-7. So uh, I'm excited for this offseason a lot. Like I said, I think teams have got a lot of decisions to make. And I think Team C, like, ooh, we, not, we, we got a new – it's a new challenge to compete with. Yeah. It's that with them guys out there in Denver. They're the big they dogs. Be around man. for a long time. They're definitely the big dogs right now, man. Yeah. No. You know, it's, you know, it's crazy that I forgot we didn't even talk about. Did Chris Paul get cut or not? <laughs> that, yo, I'm glad you brought that up. I can't believe we didn't talk about that. <laughs> Chris Haynes reported that he got waived, and then it got doubled back on by I think Shams and or Shams and Woj that said he hasn't been cut yet. They still might trade him, but. I think it's trending like he's probably going to get cut. And that just makes sense from a salary perspective. Like when they signed that contract, they front loaded the guaranteed money in the beginning mm-hmm. to where if they have to cut ties with him and it doesn't look well, and obviously, you know, the injury didn't help, you know, they don't have to take as big of a salary cap hit. So I don't know what it's going to end up being um, regardless whether he gets traded or waived like, there's a lot of teams that could use Chris Paul still. A lot of teams that could use Chris Paul still. He should go to Boston. That was the first team that came to mind. We've been saying this entire playoff run, that offense needs a, a floor general desperately, right. like somebody that dictates what's going on so it's not so stale and one-dimensional. He would help that team out a ton if he could find a way to get to Boston. Uh, lead um, defenders around him. JB don't got to use his left hand no more. He can get set up for once. <laughs> Like, listen, that'd be match made in heaven in my in my book. That yeah. I would say the Clippers too, but the Clippers they would never play. <laughs> you will have three guys who will always be in street clothes. <laughs> um, yeah, I just it's kind of weird now that I think about it. Like, it's weird to have seen Chris Paul in all these different jerseys at this point. Mm-hmm. Like early in his career, it seemed like you know it was going to be New Orleans and then L.A. Lakers or Clippers, he's going to one of those teams. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like you look back at it now, and he went to the Thunder, he went to Houston, now he was at Phoenix, and now he's going to be somewhere else. It's like I did not think this was how his career was going to end up panning out. Like we said already, you know, one of the most unlucky players just cannot catch a break. So, yeah, man, that definitely plays into it, but. Yeah, his services can still be used by a lot of NBA teams. Like, if he has the ability to just be on the floor as a floor general and command the offense and not have to be relied on too much to be a scorer, they can maybe try to find ways to hide him on the defensive side of the ball. He can still give you quality minutes at a high level. Um, I saw people speculating that maybe he goes to the Lakers and you then keep D'Lo in this scenario and you basically have D'Lo be the regular season point guard, and then come playoff time, he comes off the bench for Chris Paul. I don't want his old ass. I'm sorry. (laughs) I don't. (laughs) I don't want him, bro. Unless we get other defenders around, like more defenders around us, I'm good, bro. I don't need people hunting (laughs) a six-foot injured on one hamstring Chris Paul, bro. I'm sorry. Like, unless it's bet minimum and he plays spot minutes for us, I'm good. Yeah, off the top – I think uh, Boston seems like one of the most plug and play best fits where like exactly they have good perimeter defenders that he doesn't have to take on the best, you know, guard matchup or even really the best two. He can get hidden a lot by the defensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have great wing scores. Right. And he is always going to elevate your big man. So it's like you're going to get more out of Robert Williams, more out of potentially Al Horford if he's still there or whoever else comes in. Um, look, I like that Boston fit a lot. I don't know if they have a trade package they can put together for him, but if he gets waived, 
Um, and I'm Brad Stevens. That is the first person I am calling. Um, 100%. You find a way to get Marcus Smart out of that point guard role. It's no shade to him. It's just not as natural. And yeah. you can put one of the best point guards ever to play in that position. You do that 10 times out of 10. Mm-hmm. 100%. You, know? you have anything else you want to talk about? Anything else that we missed? I'm trying to think. I, Chris Paul, I can't believe we did not talk about that one. Yeah. I was thinking about it I, because I, I had, like, a little thing pulled up. And I, I just saw Chris Paul's name. I was like, oh, I forgot, like, the whole – That happened right thing. after we recorded the last one. That's why. Bro, what's good? Bro, we ain't even talk about the Zion stuff. We did that, not. I'm like, not. That, yeah, no, nah, that's <laughs> not diving into that. Oh Yo, my gosh, y'all need nah, some that bets on y'all team. Bad. Nah, that's just that's just funny. That's more of like a. But well, that's just funny. I don't even. I, we don't have a topic. Like that's not. <laughs> they just bug it. That's just more funny than anything. Yeah, I see. <laughs> I mean, B Souls put a video out about it, but the thumbnail it said. There's a picture of Zion. It said L me. <laughs> Yo, bro, what are we doing, bro? What are, what are we doing, bro? <laughs> Yo! <laughs> what are we doing, bro? NBA nah, country that's is funny. crazy. <laughs> that's funny, but no, nah, I ain't I ain't really got I think I think we had a this was a really good pod. It was a really good one. Yeah, if there's that's anything good. that y'all are, are, are mm. listening, take away from this, bro. Or just watch the game, bro. You do not have to make everything no hot take. You do not have to always tear something down, bro. Just appreciate what you are watching, please, because it's so annoying to see it every single year. And mm-hmm. we're at a point in time where bro, you don't got to go watch Sports Illustrated or ESPN. You come watch the Off the Glass podcast, bro. You know got y'all covered. Go watch the clips. You can watch the whole pod. You can watch the right. shorts. Watch the you can watch shorts. the vids. You can watch whatever you want. IG, you can TikTok, YouTube, Apple yeah. Podcasts, Spotify. Man, we got it all. So, I mean, you don't have to just go and listen to the hot takes 24-7. You don't got to see Stephen A. say that Jokic isn't a post-up player. That was ridiculous. <laughs> that was so stupid. Yeah. You can come and get quality analysis and coverage without all the extra stuff here on the off the glass podcast so with that this has been another episode of the off the glass podcast if you made it this far in the episode we appreciate you be sure to leave a like comment subscribe if you're on apple Podcasts or spotify go ahead and and download the episodes add it to your library go ahead and leave a five-star review i just checked the the analytics again we got listeners in canada now too Mm -hmm. We got three countries. We're going to keep checking them off. Who knows? Serbia might be next. All this Jokic talk we've been doing. You never know, man. Uh, but, but yeah, as always, we appreciate all the support you've been showing to the channel <laughs> and on the socials. Um, I'm Billy, and that's Dame, and we out. Peace. Yes, sir.